what do we have here? We have Alex Kozlowski's Alpha Physics, Waga. Uh, book one, Waga. Wait, Octopod? What is that? Hold on. Uh, let me find this. Alex Kozlowski. Um, so he sent in two different requests. I think one one's chapter one, one's chapter seven, I think. So I'm just going to go to chapter one. Um, and you guys, this alpha physics book, for whatever reason, I hadn't heard of it until today, but it is killing on the Amazon store. Let me go ahead and put the link in the comments. Um, but it's got like 640 ratings and it's only been out since April 15th. So there's must be something very special about this book. I haven't done any, uh, I haven't done any pre-read of it. But I do know that Mr. Uh, Mr. Kozlowski is an Aussie. And it says here, uh, Adrian is the main character, 40 years old, who had his body reduced to early 20s. Technically Aussie, but that does not matter too much. He's a project manager stuck 1,000 miles from his family in a post-apocalyptic world with no cars. Um... DK, I'm fairly certain all other characters in the scene are so short-term that they can be voiced however. Okay, so, um, oh, Tori Wilson says he's already read it. Um, if you guys like what I do with it here today, uh, go check it out on Amazon and um, let, uh, let Mr. Alex know where you heard it. So I'm going to try it with the Aussie accent. Um, it's going to be rough. It's going to be at least a rough start. I think once I get my rhythm going, I'll be all right. But uh, Aussie's not a strength of mine. Um, but I'm, I, I, you know, I always like challenges. I always like to challenge myself uh, for these SBTL readings when I can. Um, so, yeah, thanks, Alex Kozlowski, for requesting this. Um, and, yeah, I don't know. Maybe, uh, maybe after this read, I don't think he has an audible. He has uh, an audio book on Amazon or on Audible yet. I don't know if he's already made a deal with anybody. But yeah, um, bug him if you guys like my reading and see if uh, see if you can get him to come over to the dark side here at Sound Booth Theater. All right, here goes. There was a full nuclear family in there. Dad, mom, and daughters. They were trying to hold off the monster and failing. Uh, they were trying to hold off the monster and failing. If they fought five on one, Maybe together they could drive it off. Reassessing the octopod, Adrian became acutely aware of its strength and vitality advantage compared to its vulnerability to fire and dark. Adrian versus the monster was closely balanced. What do you guys think? Doing okay, right? Uh... Their lives were on the line. He could help, so he should. If he attacked and the man and wife came out and helped, if they fought with him, then they could probably win, providing they were not completely useless fighters. Subconsciously. Okay, wait a minute. I, I read, I read a little bit from earlier, and it seemed like it was first person. Now it feels like it's third person. Which, you know, oh wow, this is chapter 33. Well, that's, that's lucky. Now I can just do, uh, I can just do uh, the character as an Aussie instead of the narration. So I will spare you guys that pain. Their lives were on the line. He could help, so he should. If he attacked and the man and wife came out and helped, if they fought with him, then they could probably win, providing they were not completely useless fighters. Subconsciously, his feet had stopped moving. They had not moved for tens of precious seconds while the drama was unfolding. A hero would have leaped Hell, a decent person would already have joined the fight. The minor tentacles were wiggling in excitement. If he fought and they ran, if they ran, then it was back to him fighting one-on-one, -on -one, and he had a pretty good idea how that would play out. His life for theirs. With another great thump, the door bowed further, but it held. Mm, it's kind of hard to tell who's speaking here, but I'm going to assume it's Adrian. Lisa! Janet! Run! 
No! We need to save Jamie! Let go of my sister! If he died, then what about his own kids? Why should he throw away his life to save those str these strangers? There was another crash against the door. This time he heard the wood crack. The door opened more than a foot, and the waiting tentacles inched forward. The two tentacles going through the right window started thrashing more violently. Run! Leave us! Lisa, run! Janet's voice, the mum. I will save Jamie! Now was the time to act. A couple of fireballs to distract and then flee. Buy them time. If he attacked, even as a distraction, it would come after him. Could he escape? It was as fast as him, and possibly faster. Doing nothing was despicable. Doing something was death. Run now! I can't hold it! Lisa! I really don't know who's talking here. The right windows exploded outwards. One tentacle held the limp body of a young girl. Her hands were floppy, and the thick tentacle that had wrapped around her covered her mouth completely. She was squeezing her eyes shut. The other limb had snagged a teenage girl. That tentacle was hooked around her leg. The teenager was grabbing onto everything around her to stop the pull. A trail of blood extended behind her, yet still she fought. It's got them! Lisa! Jamie! I really don't know who's talking. It was too much. If he died, then he would die trying to make a difference. Running closer, he formed a dark missile in his hands. If he could have dumped 100 mana into the spell, he would have, but this spell restricted him to 30. Adrian targeted the missile at the tentacle holding Lisa. He hoped the wither effect would force it to release the girl. The missile flew. Instinctively, a second missile formed to target the tentacle holding Jamie. Halting his headlong rush, a fireball was forming. The dark missile slammed home into the feeler holding Lisa, striking only half a meter up from where it held the girl. The area around the impact blackened as the wither effect started taking hold. For the first time, the octopod's attention switched towards him, and he greeted it by releasing the fireball at the center of its mass. The fourth tentacle hit the door. It exploded open with no resistance, and through the sudden open space burst a portly middle-aged man with an axe. He swung it hard at the fourth tentacle in front of him. The man was screaming. Lisa tried to grab the window frame as she went past. The tentacle was too strong and tore her away without difficulty. The shattered glass stuck in the frame shredded one of her hands. The mum came sprinting out the door, holding two massive kitchen knives in her hands. Another fireball flashed from his hands, targeting a different mass of tentacles. The second dark missile struck home, hitting even closer to Jamie than the first had with Lisa. The tentacle holding Lisa spasmed, releasing her. The dark stain had spread through the entire width of the tentacle and everything beyond that point was now a flopping, useless dead weight. Lisa, now free, ran towards her sister. The octopod, suddenly under assault from multiple angles, abandoned the young girls to focus on the threats. At the back door, the fifth and sixth tentacles flashed forward, looping around the man. Looping around the man, the axe fell helplessly from his pinned arms. The fourth went after the women through the axe attack, the fourth went after the women through the axe attack. The fourth went after the fourth the fourth went after the women through the axe attack had done a surprising amount of damage to it. The adults were yelling in helpless desperation. The other three tentacles spun towards him. The octopod had recognized him as a threat. The fireballs slammed home. The octopod was coming towards him. Despite the gap separating them, the tentacles had had the reach that is, apart from the one that had held Lisa. For that appendage, fully a third of it hung useless. There was a tearing, and that third dropped right off. Dark missiles were the optimal choice. <clears throat> the fireballs had singed a lot of the smaller tentacles, destroying them, but the damage seemed lower. The dark missile, however, formed slowly. Throwing himself backwards, he avoided the two tentacles that lashed out towards him, as he as he fell backwards, he kept the magic active, but he had to excuse me, but he had to drop the spear. This was not even a contest. It was going to kill him then and there. He hoped his death would provide the family with enough time to escape. The missile fired off as he tumbled head over heels. He had aimed it just before his desperate leap backwards. More scrapes and bruises, only fifty mana left. Scrambling away from the octopod on hands and knees, he needed to get some distance. 
there was the sound of something heavy smashing into the ground just behind him. Getting to his feet briefly, the creature was following him. Good. The family would get time to get away. No. Bad. Emily. I died doing my best. Get behind a tree. Putting something solid between him and the monster running around behind him might be enough. The monster was still coming. The nearest tree to him was reduced to kindling as all three of the octopod's closest appendages smashed down upon it. The dark missile was ready. He linked it to the remaining long tentacle and let it go. It focused exclusively on him. Beyond the creature, he could see the family getting together and running around the side of the house. Jamie was being carried by her dad. The creature rotated, bringing fresh, undamaged tentacles to face him. An image hit him. Run, in big, bold lettering. There was no need. It was the only thought in his mind. There was fence coming up. Judging the distance, he had no time to go through it. He had to hurdle it. There were the sounds of breaking trees behind him. Jumping. Adrian's foot caught the top wire, nothing he could do. Out of control, hands breaking the fall, landing hard, probably broke his right arm. There would surely be grazes on his face. Already scrambling forward, broken arm or not, he needed to flee. Falling, crawling, running forwards. Something whacked into his back leg, sending him tumbling forward and sideways. So much pain. Looking back, he saw the octopod watching him from ten meters away, assessing his condition, planning its next move. It almost looked like it wanted to keep him alive to drag back to its young. If it came, he would use the last of his mana on fire hands. Chapter 34 A tentacle came down too fast for him to respond, slamming into his right leg. More pain. It felt like the pain was lighting up his eyes. It was that intense. It radiated from his legs all the way to the base of his head. He forgot the broken arm. As he lay there in agony, the octopod turned around and went back the way it had come. It was going to catch the escaping family. No! The tiny fireball launched from his hands, hitting some small tentacles on the back. The octopod hes hesitated for a moment but kept going. It was going to kill the it was going to kill the family despite his best efforts. It was moving in a lopsided manner, with over half of its main appendages showing significant damage. Even its inherent healing had suffered. The fight had hurt it, but not enough. Glancing briefly at his legs, he wished that he had not. The one caught in the second strike was noticeably flattened from the middle of the thigh to below the knee. Feeling so sick, Adrian shut the eyes. He had lost. So much pain, and the family was going to die anyway. He was just not powerful enough. Anger radiated from the interface. Raw, explosive fury. A bird pushing a reluctant chick out of its nest to make it fly. <clears throat> a jockey whipping a horse to make it run faster. A fat man screaming, Move! at a pedestrian before barging into the young man and knocking him flying just before a semi-trailer exploded through the space they had previously held. More of the anger. Why? What? The fat man again. The picture zoomed in closer, everything in intense high definition. Move! The voice thundering, then zooming to enlarge the picture again. Move! Even louder this time. The slightly yellow teeth had irregular edges, drifting closer. Move! like a jet engine in volume, spit flying out. One arm functioned, so he used it to commando crawl forward. The ruined leg was dragging behind. In the distance, there was screaming. The octopod had got them. Approval had replaced anger. So much pain. Lowering the head. Anger coming back. <sighs> Shut up! I can't do this. The fat man zoomed in close to the picture in full high definition. Move! One arm crawl again, legs dragging. Approval. Doing it again, somehow pushing through the pain. Another meter. Two meters. Three meters. The screaming had stopped, but all there was for him was the agony of each movement, getting away so he could avoid the octopod when it came back. 
Adrian's autonomy was denied abruptly. Why would I not do that? Um, Adrian's autonomy was denied abruptly. Ambushers fade and stasis snapped on. Every component maximized to its full potential. It beat moving, so he added his will to the skills. Keep away, hide, fade. His body was his own once more. The octopod was back, sniffing around. It was too strong. Half of Adrian's mana had regenerated. But that would not be enough. From the sounds, it was searching for him over fifty meters away. Had he really moved that far? Behind him, there were sounds of frustration and the smashing of trees. The movements were not coming towards him. With shock, he realized that he was going to survive. Almost two hours passed as his wounds healed. The octopod was long gone, and other animals had padded nearby him. The sun rose over the horizon. That was intense. So, yeah, that is the read for today. That's the request for today. Um, the SBT Classic Poll. So, again, thank you, Alex Kozlowski, for requesting this book, Alpha Physics, book one, Waga. Um, it's doing really well, so I'm assuming people really like it. So go check it out. I mean, that's a really cool cover. It's, it seems like a surreal, like kind of a surreal book. Um, the way that the, the writing style and everything. Um, but yeah, I imagine it's going to be a fun time. So go check it out, guys. And uh, if you like my reading of it, tell Alex. And that's all we have for today. So thank you all for coming and hanging out with us while we goof off in our booths. Um, it was a pleasure. It always is. And watch out for the next Sound Booth Theater Live two weeks from today. Bye, everybody.